Hey everyone, welcome back to The Health Bridge. Dr. Pedram Shojai here with Dr. Sarah Gottfried. Hi, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Hi, Pedram. Hey, hey. so we are uh, rounding out a wonderful year. Um, it's been a busy year, and I know that you've been uh, cranking away. Uh, at, like, I haven't seen you. Uh, I see you, like, you know, virtually, but I haven't seen you in a long time because you're finishing the manuscript on your next book. And uh, I want to congratulate you because I know how much work that is. And I wanted to hopefully get you to kind of peel back a little bit and give us something uh, so we know what uh, the, the illustrious Dr. Gottfried's been working on and hiding out doing. Ooh, thank you, Pedro. Well, I yeah, I'm all about this next book. I'm super excited about it. It doesn't actually come out until March, but we just got the book up on Amazon. It's on Barnes & Noble, so you can pre-order it now. And what I would love to do is just to talk about some of the exciting thoughts and memes in this book. But I, you know, first I just want to say that this book is such a labor of love. Like it's really come from this place of me struggling with food, like having a war with food for many decades of my life. And then finally breaking free of that and really understanding, especially in the female body, that your hormones dictate what your body does with food. And when you get on top of that, when you figure it out, it changes everything. Now that's true for the guys too, hmm. but in women, the hormones are a little different. Like estrogen plays a bigger role. I think insulin plays a bigger role. And so my book is really about how to reset those hormones in 21 days. Wow, that's I, I for those of you who are new to the show or who don't know Sarah from the other stuff, I mean, she's been like a monk for months and months and months and and just really like into this book to the point where like I'm a little jealous like I'm, I'm feeling like you know I'm jealous of the book because I, I want some more Sarah time. <laughs> oh I've been <laughs> neglecting you. I'm I know sorry, I Pedro. know but but I know how uh, deep into it you are and how you've been living the diet and doing all that so uh, talk to us a little bit about the hormones I mean I don't want to like spoil your book or anything but I, I kind of want to peel back and just get a sense of why this is so universally applicable and how food is actually kind of keying into some of these top-down systems that are driving our behavior and all kinds of stuff. Sure. Well, you know, when I wrote my first book, The Hormone Cure, I feel like I didn't talk about the weight, the role of weight for me and how I was carrying around an extra 25 pounds. So I, I was really struggling when I was in my mid-30s with restricting food and having kind of this drill sergeant approach to how I was eating less and exercising more. And I, I really discovered that the drill sergeant doesn't work for me. Like I do much better with kind of coaxing and not the big shove. Does that make sense? Mm, mm. Yeah. And I think that speaks to a lot of our listeners too, right? Is Coaxing is, you know, kind of that tendon befriend, whereas the big shove is, you know, drill sergeant. And, you know, most people who grew up with a drill sergeant father, uh, you know, kind of seeing therapists now, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't work for a lot of uh, personality types. So I'd love to know how that nuance can, you know, work to someone's favor. Because, you know, I, I'm a martial arts guy, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like I, I've been around the drill sergeant thing. I know that well, and I know that does not work. For everybody it doesn't work and you know what i discovered when i was in my mid-30s and i went to my doctor and said hey i'm fat i'm stressed out i can't sleep at night i've got no sex drive and he told me you know exercise more eat less and how about an antidepressant what i realized was my hormones were totally off and i i tested myself like i had a hunch that i needed to apply my medical training to my own body and so I left his office with a prescription for Prozac and a birth control pill, and I went to the lab. And I found out that my cortisol was three times what it should have been. My insulin was sky high. I had insulin resistance where my cells were numb to insulin, and it wasn't you know, helping me use food as fuel the way that it's designed to. My leptin was high. I had leptin resistance. Leptin is the hunger hormone. And then I also discovered I had estrogen dominance. I had way too much estrogen versus what my body needed. So those were some of the key hormones that were really driving my tendency to get fat. And here's the cool part. You know, if you learn nothing else today, here's like the cool scientific moment. I started looking at the literature 
And I found a study that showed that you can reset your insulin. You can fix your insulin in 72 hours, 72 hours. And that mm. was just like, oh my gosh. Okay. If it's that fast, I could do it. Yeah. What am I doing for the next three days? Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Clear the decks. Let me clear my schedule. Mm. So that led to me developing a program where you reset seven hormones metabolism in these three-day bursts, these 72-hour bursts. So the, the program is basically to reset the hormones that I mentioned. So estrogen, insulin, leptin, cortisol, thyroid, growth hormone, testosterone. Those are the seven hormones that we reset. They're the ones that basically determine whether you take your food and either burn it as fuel or store it as fat. Hmm. Most of the people in the industrialized world, especially in the United States, are behind door number two. <laughs> and, and it's an epidemic and it's killing us. So this is incredibly relevant because calorie counting and uh, you know going to treadmill farms and all these types of things that people have been doing for what, 20, 30 years now? If those things worked, then the obesity epidemic wouldn't be here. So there's something else happening. And so I'd love for you to speak to that. Yeah, well, I think the I think we've been misguided. I mean, we've we've really convicted the wrong guys when it comes to trying to get lean and trying to fight this, you know, epidemic of obesity that's been occurring. There's many reasons for it. You know, we can blame toxins and endocrine disruptors, what are now known as obesogens. So we need to make sure that we are minimize our, minimizing our exposure and then also getting rid of them when we do get exposed and we're all getting exposed. There's also a way of working with food that I think has been lost in kind of our, our daily conversation, our daily parlance around food. And the, I think insulin is really key here. So, you know, if we dial back to when I was in high school, I graduated from high school in 1984, and I was a devotee of Dean Ornish. And I love Dean Ornish. He's done some really interesting work, but he was very anti-fat. You know, the goal when I first started learning about nutrition from him was to get your fat down to 10% or less. Oy. And so people became, um, people became, you know, like pastaholics <laughs> and started you know, getting more sugar, more refined carbohydrates, more grains in their diet and cutting out the fat. And this is, you know, you talk about this in your film Origins with Johnny Bowden. We convicted the wrong guy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. fat does not make you fat. I think that's another really important message here. But you're also, you know, I think you're, you're getting to a really interesting point about some of the myths, some of the myths that we have around body image and food, and maybe we can bust a few myths here. I feel like one myth that I encounter a lot is maybe uh, what we could call the Oprah assumption, which is this idea that, oh, okay, I'm overweight, I'm fat, and that's just who I am. I need to accept it. I need to just, uh, you know, this is, this is my lot in life. I'm genetically programmed to be this way, and I just need to buy fat clothes and kind of live that way. Now, I, I don't, you know, I think it's much more complex when it comes to Oprah, but I think many people kind of fall into this category. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that you have a choice. Like you have a choice about the way that these hormones are either working for you or working against you. And if you're not making a choice, eating lean and changing the foods that you're eating so that they reset your hormones, then you are making the choice to be more fat. Yeah, and that's a big piece of this is a lot of the people who have thrown in the towel, if you will, um, a lot of them have tried, a lot of them have looked at diets, a lot of them knew that maybe they should change this or change that. And, you know, they, they had negative results or they had no results. And they got to the point where they got frustrated and just gave up and said, forget about it. You know, I don't need to be lean to watch TV. I don't need to be lean to be a mom and all these types of things. And they just kind of like life circumstances took them into um, just complacency there. And, you know, there's nothing per se wrong with any of that. I don't care about the vanity stuff at all, but, you know, 
I do care about the mortality rates. I do care about, you know, the the fallout from the health uh, bonanza that has, you know, basically been, you know, inflicting itself on the corporations of America, the people of America, the families of America, leaving widows and leaving children, you know, as orphans because people are getting really sick and they're dying, right? So that then becomes a piece, a, a real message of hope right, is look, we just had it wrong and let's try tweaking it and looking at different ways to do this to, to kind of clean up some of that. So I'd love to, you know, how do these top-down systems code for that? Because most people, you know, don't know what hormones are. They know that we have them, but it seems like some sort of esoteric biology term. So can you bring that down a little bit so people can kind of get what they do and then we'll jump in from there? Oh, you got it. Yeah, let's start really simple with estrogen. Yeah. Yeah. So estrogen is the hormone that makes you uniquely feminine. And for the guys, you know, generally you want you you want to be managing your testosterone to estrogen ratio. For women, we're looking at your progesterone to estrogen ratio. So estrogen gives you hips and breasts. And if you're a guy, you don't want that. So we want to be managing estrogen. We live in a, a time where we're polluted and we get a lot of estrogen into our system. And so we want to be making sure that we're getting rid of estrogen. Ideally, you just use it once and then you get rid of it. Mm -hmm. So some people, maybe because they're overweight, are making too much estrogen on their own. Other people are getting exposed to estrogen in the environment, things like bisphenol A and receipts. That's one of the most common exposures. And what we want to do is to be thoughtful about how to manage this estrogen load. Now, one of the ways of resetting your estrogen is to make sure that you're getting adequate fiber. So for women, that means somewhere around 35 to 45 grams a day. For guys, a little more, sometimes somewhere in the range of 40 to 50 grams per day. And another important piece is to look at your meat. Now, this is another point from Origins that I really liked. I remember Abel James was talking about, okay, consider the hamburger and what your hamburger ate. Mm. So a lot of the red meat that we're eating is fed grain, GMO grain, it's injected with six steroid hormones on average. And so you want to look at the meat that you're eating and whether that can be disrupting your estrogen balance. Hmm. What is the average consumption, just roughly, of men and women um, of fiber now, just to put that into perspective? <laughs> yeah, great question. So the average American gets somewhere around 12 to 15 grams per day. So we are missing the mark by uh, somewhere around like half of what we should be getting. Mm. And fiber is just like the easy thing to do to help reset your estrogen so that you can get it out of this constant recycling in the body, which I think of as bad karma, so that you can just, you know, grab the estrogen and poop it out or pee it mm. out. That's what we need to be doing. So the fiber will kind of scrub and grab and move the stuff out, which will help with kind of just overall detox and conjugation of that stuff. Okay, so having the estrogen cycling around, not good. Uh, what about all these other hormones that we're talking about? Because there's, there's a lot of them, and some of them are big words. <laughs> yeah, so the estrogen recycling around, what happens, you know, this bad karma analogy is that it keeps stimulating estrogen receptors over and over and over again. And this is not a good thing. You know, the book is really about how to change the molecular sex that's happening between each of your hormones and the receptor. So you want to change that relationship, upgrade your molecular sex. If you have too much estrogen recycling through your body, it seems to be linked to a greater risk of estrogen related disorders, things like metabolic syndrome, things like diabetes, certain types of breast cancer, endometrial cancer, and ovarian cancer. It also affects your gut microbiota, so that set of bacteria and their DNA. There's a certain subset of them that control your estrogen levels called the estrobilome. And I talked quite a bit about this in. Uh, in your origins summit. Yeah. So this is, you know, and then the other important piece is how you know, this is not estrogen in isolation. In my book, you reset estrogen in three days, but it also helps you with several other hormones. It helps you with insulin. It starts to help you with your thyroid function. So these hormones tend to crosstalk. And when you start to fix one, you start to see this benefit with other hormones as well. Hmm. So one point before we move on that subject, uh, 
the effect of estrogen on diabetes, that's something that I'm sure a few people's ears perked up. There's so many diabetics in, in our universe, right? So uh, I would love for you to just elaborate on that real quick because that's, that's a very interesting piece that your average doctor is really never talking about. Yeah, well, this is, this is a really interesting area. You know, a lot of the, the synthetic chemicals that we get exposed to act as xenoestrogen. So they bind the estrogen receptor, they act like a fake estrogen in the body. They also can affect your insulin levels. So there's a bit of crosstalk that happens with the endocrine disruptors that you get mm -hmm. exposed to, and they're put now into this category known as obesogens, you know, basically synthetic chemicals that make you fat. Hmm. The other thing that happens is that when you have estrogen dominance, there's this bad conversation that happens between estrogen and insulin. And often when you have estrogen dominance, you're turning your cells into these insulin resistant cells. And so you wanna be really careful about that. And I don't think it's helpful to just look at one hormone in isolation. I think you want this aggregate plan so that you're resetting all seven of these hormones together. Hmm. That's what I see creates the synergy and the improvement in terms of weight loss and keeping the weight off. We've run this program now for about 5,000 people, this program where you reset seven hormones. And what we found is that people drop their blood sugar by 20 points. They go from the pre-diabetes range down to the normal range. They also lose up to 15 pounds. So there's definitely some important metrics that we're seeing when you reset these seven hormones in aggregate. So if I'm a normal person out there in the normal universe, and I go in with a lot of these complaints to my doctor, um, what are we talking about? We're talking about probably a birth control pill. We're talking about maybe what metformin or something to control blood sugar. Uh, you know, how many drugs are we talking about to manage something that can be managed through diet and some of these resets? Yeah, that's a great question. So a lot of people who've come into my program, I'm gonna to go to the data first, because that's my tendency, as you know, mm -hmm. Pedram. So we have a lot of people who come into the hormone reset diet, and they're already on multiple medications. You mentioned metformin, which is often used for women who have polycystic ovarian syndrome, or men or women who have insulin resistance, and they're you know taking those baby steps towards diabetes. We also have people who come in on high blood pressure medications. And a lot of people don't connect their hormones to some of these, these problems. They don't realize, oh, my daily caffeine habit is driving up my cortisol and is leading to a problem with my blood pressure. So when they go through this program and they do these three-day resets in sequence, what we're finding is that many of them are working with their doctors to get off of their medications. So that part is really thrilling to me. I mean, ultimately what we want, I think I can speak for you, Pedram, as well. We want to be in that place where our patients don't need us anymore. <laughs> like They don't need the constant tweaking of their blood pressure medication or their metformin because they're using food first as a way to, you know, be empowered and manage their health. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, and you do definitely speak for me on that, is that there are so many sick people in this world that the doctors in our culture, and you know, in the next generation or so, there's going to be so few doctors uh, uh, population-wise in terms of how the population density is increasing that th there's not going to be enough doctors to sit there and have to. It's already a, a nightmare. It's two-hour waits and waiting rooms and, and trying to get in for seven minutes uh, for lifestyle-related disorders. So the doctors are going to be dealing with a lot more complex complex stuff and all this lifestyle stuff, if people don't realize how to you know, take care of it themselves, it's going to get pretty ugly pretty fast. And so yeah, all the good doctors I know are trying to teach their patients to not need them because there's more than enough patients that are really sick with things that do need medical intervention that they're going to be dealing with um, you know, in, in with less wait, wait time and more time to figure out the complexity of the things that come after you've taken care of yourself, right? If, if you've taken care of yourself and you're fine, you go live your life, if there's still problems, that's when you're supposed to go to the doctor. Yeah, this is such a good point. And it's, you know, I feel like we know healthcare is an absolute train wreck and <laughs> uh, we have ideas about how we can turn that around. But I really feel that an important piece of healthcare reform and kind of taking back our health is empowerment. 
and for people to not turn their power over to their doctor and just say, oh, okay, I'm stuck with this pre-diabetes diagnosis or I'm stuck with this high blood pressure diagnosis, I better just take the pill and shut up about it. We want you to be the squeaky wheel. Like we want you to be thinking about some of the ways that you can get empowered and reclaim your health. And what I hope is that, you know, some of these tools that have made such a difference in my own life and helped me recover from food addiction and reset my seven hormones and metabolism and get cortisol back into that Goldilocks position so that it's not driving me to binge on food at night. That's what I hope to bring to people with my book. Fantastic. Yeah, well, and you've been doing that in your life with your first book and your career. And I think that this, this turn now is really an evolution of your personal process as uh, you know a person you know going through this and kind of revealing what you've been doing and pulling back the kimono showing how a doctor heals herself uh, and also just the evolution of the, the the good doctor that you are in how you carry that work out to help people and the fact that you've done all these trials with 5,000 people and, and, and you know more soon to come to say, look, this isn't just some speculation. Look, it's working for these people and it can work for you. So the choice is, you know, keep taking all these drugs and get stuck on the hamster wheel or, you know, there's some there's definitely something really powerful on the other side over here that maybe you should look at. Well, thank you for that. And I, I would say I totally agree with that message. And I would also add that I have two younger sisters. So I have one sister who's 35. I have another sister who just turned 40. And they often will ask me, okay, do I even need to pay attention to this hormone thing? Because I'm not really seeing much in the way of problems. I don't, you know, I think I, I don't need to worry about that until I'm in my, my 50s. And I, I just want to make the case for being proactive about your hormones as you get older. Because what I would wish for all of our listeners is that, you know, maybe if you haven't turned 40 yet, that when you get to that point, you have your hormones working on your side. And there's ways you can do that with your food. You know, you can mm. do it with your fork, which I think is so exciting. I want you to prevent those hormonal misfires that I experienced myself and I figured out the unlock and then I want to share it with our listeners. So that's what I think is so exciting that it's not, you know, wait until you have the blood pressure medication, but do it now. <laughs> like yeah. it really is going to make a difference with your health. Yeah. And that's kind of a mark of where we're at in our culture too, is you, know, you could be driving this car and there's like, lights on on the dash it's like you know, hey your oil is low and your temperature is high and all these types of things and people go well do i need to worry about this quite yet or shall i just wait till the car catches on fire and then take it into the body shop and that's really our perspective on health in the healthcare model now is just wait for something to break and then it's a diagnosable illness and then your insurance will pay for it and all these types of things that are nonsense because those gauges are there i mean you could look at those numbers and say "Ooh." 10 years from now, this is going to be a very big problem. Why don't I intercept that before it even gets close? Let's just put water in you know, the, the radiator or whatever it is. So that's where healthcare is going. So work like this, I think, is incredibly relevant. I mean, you know I love you. I know no one needs to you know, doubt that. Or we've been doing this for a long time. Uh, but this isn't just self-promotion. This is about saying, guys, you need to step up and take an active role in your self-care, in your health care, understanding where food is related to all these other things. Food has just been relegated to this realm of calories and macronutrients for too long. And food, is, food as information is really a revolution that's happening. And, and that's part of what Sarah's talking about. Sarah's kind of taken it to a few other levels. So Sarah, I'm just, I'm so happy to know you. This has been really fun. <laughs> Well, thank you, Pedram. I, I so appreciate it. And, you know, I'm on, I'm on a, a mission to really change hormones, change the conversation about hormones, change the way that people are eating so that they, they eat mindfully and aware of how it affects your hormones. So that is what my book is about. And if people want to learn more or order the book, pre-order it on Amazon, you can submit the receipt and get some amazing bonuses. You can learn more at hormonereset.com, hormonereset.com. Awesome. Guys uh, guys and gals, I, I'm, I'm guilty of it. And, and so when I say guys, I don't mean to be sexist, by the way. I've had a few people say, why don't you ever mention the gals? I'm like, no, it's just a figure of speech. I'm sorry. I'm just dumb. So <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, um, the 
the essence of this is that Sarah has spent her hard-earned time uh, like working to write a book that's going to help you not need her. And she could have parked up in a clinic and waited for you to break to do it. So when the good doctors of the world um, take that step of sacrifice to do something to help humanity, uh, the least we can do is support them. So please, please support this. Go get her book as a pre-launch. If you're a guy, just get it for a woman in your life. Just Help support the people that are doing the right thing and you'll help make the world a better place. You'll transform your life. You'll transform healthcare. So Sarah, give us that uh, URL again, please. Sure. It's hormonereset.com. Hormonereset.com. Awesome. Get the book and then keep the receipt and uh, there'll, be a, there'll be a receipt reader thing that'll help get some goodies for people as well. Dr. Sarah Gottfried, Harvard trained badass, uh, extraordinaire, who's out there just fighting the good fight and just a delightful person. So thank you. I know you've been buried in your writing cave getting this done. And so it's nice to see you out um, and uh, you know, back in the world doing what you're doing. But um, you know, it's a lot of work writing books. So my, my hat's off to you. And um, if you're listening to this right now, get the book, read it, share it, help people understand that there are ways around this you don't need five six seven drugs when you start changing those things around eventually you can start working your way off those drugs when you work with your doctor and have a sane solution to an insane problem love it thank you Pedro, and thanks to our listeners we are so appreciative of you guys and uh here to serve we're here to serve you okay thank you everybody bye thank you.